Hello gamers and dungeon masters. My name is Brady Doz and welcome back. If you're new here, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's time for some dungeon master tips. Today we're talking dark vision and how it might be ruining your game. If you're having issues with dark vision, it's probably for a couple of reasons. One of them is you're probably incorrectly running it. And so we're going to go over a couple things. The rules for dark vision, the rules for dim light and lightly obscured, which are kind of the same thing, but not really. And then we're going to go through a couple of examples about how you might be using dark vision incorrectly. I'm going to read exactly what the player's handbook says about dark vision, just so I don't uh, say it incorrectly. And then I'll put a screen cap of it right beneath me about my chest, like right here or something. So. All right, it says, within a specified range, a creature with dark vision can see in dim light as if it were bright light and in darkness as if it were dim light. So areas of darkness are only lightly obscured as far as that creature is concerned. However, the creature can't discern color in the darkness, only shades of gray. <clears throat> so that means two things. One, um, their good vision is technically extended from incomplete light to also now in dim light, all darkness is now lightly obscured. And now let's talk about what lightly obscured is or dim light. So dim light, also called shadows, creates a lightly obscured area. Lightly obscured says, in a lightly obscured area, such as dim light, patchy fog, or moderate foliage, creatures have disadvantage on wisdom perception checks that rely on sight. And this is why you think dark vision is ruining your games. It's because you're incorrectly not using this disadvantage on perception checks in dim light. All right, so since we've set these expectations for what dim light, darkness, and bright light is, make sure you are enforcing that your players can only see within the bright light and dim light of the torch when they have dark vision when they have dark vision those 40 feet of light that radiate from the torch are all visible that's when the perception checks are regular or advantage if they have it but usually not um only those 40 feet of circular light are what they can see well in anything beyond that is now lightly obscured and they have disadvantage on sight checks this is especially Especially important when they are watching on guard for the night or exploring a dark dungeon or anything that does not have light. They need to rely on torches. If you are not making them rely on torches, this is why you think dark vision is broken. It's not. You have to enforce this rule of disadvantage on perception checks outside of the torch range. You have to. If you forget about this rule, you are opening up a can of worms for the rest of your game. Let's say you're in a dungeon, it's got winding tunnels, and then you come into a giant open room. It's like 80 feet wide, you can't see the ceilings, there are pillars, things hide up on the pillars and the ceiling. But this torch they hold only lets them see 40 feet up. The ceilings are 80. There are going to be creatures that can then see down or hear them coming. That are silent they are making noise while they walk through a dungeon they are still being picked up by the dungeon denizens when they enter this giant room with a glowing bright stick that they call a torch these monsters are going to descend or whatever they are let's just say it's a giant spider it is going to descend from the ceiling and attack them this is where dark vision is and the way you're running it giving them an unfair advantage is because you're letting them see all the way up don't let them see all the way up. They can only see 40 feet or the torch range. Maybe they're holding it 5 feet up because, you know, they're holding it at chest level or whatever. So they see 45 feet up. That's fine. But anything outside that, to see the tippy top of the room, that is only a disadvantaged perception check. Nothing else. This is why you need to keep the rule accurate. If you don't use it, you're letting them get away with essentially murder on your creatures. Okay? This is this is not what you want. As that spider descends, it could be a surprise round. It could get a free round of attacks on 
the group or just the people that are potentially surprised, this is what's throwing off your combats and dungeon encounters because it all starts with that dark vision. That spider doesn't get a surprise round. Well, now that fight's so much easier. Now the players are already aware of what's going on. You want to give yourself as many of the advantages as the game has written in its rules. This isn't like trying to screw over your players. This is accurately playing the game. Use the dark vision rules and dim light rules correctly. And I promise this will make the game more fun. It'll have your players like teetering and cautious on edge. And every time they go into a dungeon, they will pull out that torch because you're making them rely on it. They want to have fun. You want them to have fun. Ignoring rules, for the most part, some are bad, but when they're so pivotal in the everyday gameplay of D&D, you want to make sure you get them correct. Another example of when torches are useful, that you might be giving your players too much leeway with dark vision is when they're bunkering down for night in the wilderness. Um, the group I'm running for right now has two magic users that have the light cantrip, so they don't have to use as many torches, which is fine. You don't want to like super punish, but you want to make sure when they are on watch, they have to use torches to see what's around them. There may be a campfire in the middle, but that only sees a little bit more than torch. So you want to make sure if they're being creative, they can come up with other ways, but a really easy way for the group to defend their campsite is to make three like posts with a torch. They tie a torch to the top and they set out like a triangular pattern around the campsite. And so those players with dark vision that are on watch, they can see everywhere around the enclosed campsite. It'll be what, like 40 feet out. So they can essentially see like a hundred feet all the way around. That way they know they're protected. You can still get away with creatures coming in to try and ambush and whatnot, depending on if the players say they're actively watching or you just keep it up to a passive perception check. A creature can always, always, always hide better than a passive roll since it's just the average. So there are opportunities for when you can fix your dark vision rulings. Make sure you're strict with them. Every night they sleep in the wilderness, make them use torches. Long rest, eight hours, you know, maybe it's 10 hours, you know, it's just the minimum. That's if they do the three posts, that's 24 at the lowest number of torches. Okay, so they're spending gold every time they sleep to nickel and dime them, but it, it does matter. And the more core elements of the game you get correct, the more they pile on top of each other and everything kind of falls in line with you want to make sure the fundamentals are correct and you need to start it with dark vision, fix dark vision in your game. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, subscribe for more videos like this, and I promise I've got some good ones coming. Thank you, everybody.